Welcome to The Shooting Show. I'm Simon Garnham and today we're in North Essex, roof shooting. We're off. We're away. Scout. Back. Back. There's a squirrel hut. Ah, oh, it's just. There it is, sitting on the branch of branch. It's down. Scout here. Scout here. Scout here. Here, good girl. Sit. I'm not going to send her for a squirrel. Sit. Scout, good girl. Sit. Oi. Sit, good girl. This is the good thing about roof shooting at this time of night. You can get, get squirrels as well. Here come the pigeons. That's down. I tend to try and pick the birds as I go along when I'm roost shooting because as it gets dark, it gets harder and harder to mark them. So I've got a pigeon down here. I found that squirrel, but I'm not going to take it with me. Although Patrick Galbraith, the Shooting Times editor, loves cooked squirrel. I'm not such a fan myself. And then I've got one down behind me. This is not the normal corner that they come into, but because we've got this strong northerly, I'm banking on them wanting to roost in these ivies where they'll be a bit more sheltered. We're going to be drilling peas over to my right hand side over to the west in the next three to four weeks and I need to get on top of the pigeons in here to prevent the crop damage. Early March, get in here, fast and furious, snap shooting, ignore the trees, ignore the branches, shoot them as you see them. It's a really great end actually to the, uh, you know, it's a natural follow on I suppose to the driven shooting season because the birds come fast and hard looking to get into the trees, they'll circle overhead. Really good sport. <laughs> We're gonna have to go a long way for that one, dog. Curled over my right shoulder, looking to come into these, and I think it must have just seen me at the last minute, and they both exited with the wind in their tails. One of them dropped. Need a good dog for roof shooting, don't you? And you're not bad. What you tend to find is they come in singles, pairs, and then in a great cloud of them. Really exciting. That's down. Back. Good girl. Good girl. Dead, 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 dead. Good girl. And that, that is a classic roof shooting shot. Over the shoulder, fast you can, throw the gun, give it loads of lead. Good girl. Oh, this is about peak time really, half five is about peak time. 20 minutes either side of it. A lot of it is about silhouette shooting. Good girl, scout, sit. I'm just going to get that one as well. Back, back. Good girl, back, back, back. Good girl. Hoping I might get a few corvids as well. There's a lot of jackdaws roosting this wood and I don't want jackdaws or rooks when we drill the peas. This is the reason I'm in here this evening. Wild garlic is really good for business. It's really good for the chefs. It makes a cracking pesto, makes delicious salad dressing. And um, it's <laughs> selling for 16 pounds a kilo at the moment. So 
we need it to be in the very best sort of condition. And if we get 200 pigeons roosting in here at night, pretty quickly, it gets ruined. We can't sell a leaf like that, for example. So that's what I'm doing tonight, a bit of crop protection. It's been crop protection this afternoon as well. So it was a shooting times job uh, at the same time. I think we got some good photos. We'll be able to see it in the magazine. Uh, we were after crows mainly, jackdaws. It was uh, not just crop protection actually, it was both general licenses actually. My friend the gamekeeper, Liam Ferris at the old church shoot, lovely little shoot. He has a lot of grey partridges and he at this time of the year really needs us to get on top of the Corvid, so that's what we were doing this afternoon. It was a good afternoon. We got a nice little bag and now we're in the woods. And then some more. Here. Scout, sit. Back, 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 go back, back. Might need to help her with that one. Pigeons are very strong. If, they, if you prick them, they'll fly for a long way. So I believe in picking them straight away. And I'd rather pick an injured one straight away and miss a couple of shots than leave it out there. So there she is. That's a good girl. That's not injured. Good girl. Come on then. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Dead. Good girl. Good girl. Hey? Eh? Good girl. I do like the cartridges I'm using tonight. I use them for driven as well. The black gold game ball. 30 grams of six. Sometimes I use 32s. But they've got a really good punch. There's one coming over my right. That's down as well. Sometimes they'll come back round as we end the second one. If the, if the first bird drops, weirdly, I must, be, I must be very noisy up there, I suppose, in the wind, because that one didn't, but it was a pair. and Got the first, and then the second kind of thinks, well, my mate's settled. Scout, go back, go back. Good girl, back, back, back. Good girl, where is it? I tend to uh, shoot the top barrel first with roosting. Just that bit tighter choked. I don't know why really, but for long shots like that, it seems a good idea. This is chestnut coppice in here. And the bit that Scout's going to now, I've been coppicing. There she is, good girl, come on then. That's a good girl, come on then. Good girl, good girl, dead, 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 good girl, good girl. Oh. Bag is growing, is that six I think, seven? What is that? Good girl. It's not a big bag game, roost shooting, you don't get twenties and thirties. It's a good night if you're getting double figures. I don't think we're going to get in double figures tonight, dog, are we? Lost there. Lost, 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 lost. Good girl, come on then. Good girl, here, dead. Here, dead. There's a scout here. Good girl, dead. Dead, good girl. It's a really really good time of night to look at the drays. The squirrels have been out and hunting, they've come out with their hibernation if they have hibernated. And there's a dray there, and there's a dray there, and it's one of the reasons I like this corner, just to keep on top of the squirrels. Because this is a great little wood, this is a great little wood for nightingales. Yeah, and we've got grey partridges out as well, all round it, so we need to keep on top of the squirrels. So we're drawing to the end of roosting time, really, flighting time. I can't see there being many more, but something I've noticed with this wood in the past is that 
early on in the flight, they come into this area here, and then late in the flight, because there's a good thick bit of ivy on that far side of the wood, they'll just go straight in, drop straight down. So just for that last bit of roosting, I'm gonna move 100 yards that way and uh, just see if we can get some last sport and some last crop protection out of it. So we're down to last light now, really, last knockings. Quite often you do get last minute birds coming in. Like here. Back, back, back. Good girl, back. Back. Good girl, back. Scout, back. Good girl. Get out, out. Good girl, out, out. Good girl, you're on it, you're on it, you're on it. Lost there, lost there, lost there. Good girl, come on then. Good girl, come on there. Good girl. Dead, good girl. Dead. Good. Shoot is the sort of thing that you just hang on and hang on and hang on and you just think, oh, maybe there's another chance, maybe there's another chance. Well, I am going to call it a night with that. I'm happy with that. We've got seven, I think. Um, I'll count the bird bag when we get back to the truck. But that's a nice little evening's flight on top of a good afternoon over the, the maze. Yeah, I'm more than happy with that. Well, back of the truck now, the moon's up and it's pitch dark. We picked six pigeons and a crow and a squirrel. Not a bad afternoon, really. Uh, 13 shots, it's about average for me. Uh, if you'd like the video, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to The Shooting Show. So this week, we're going to be having a look at the new Pulsar Digex C50 rifle scope. Now, it's a night vision scope, but it also incorporates a very clear and very good colour day screen. So the Digex has three modes. It has the colour day screen, it has a night vision mode, and it also has a twilight mode. So the twilight mode is basically used at dusk when um, using an IR has no real benefit. Uh, if you're using this at dusk when it's just getting dark but not quite fully dark then it will pick up any ambient light and it will still give you a colour picture even in very low light conditions. So the C50 actually needs very little ambient light to give a colour picture. I was in fact using this scope just the other evening to film a fox in my garden and uh, it's probably only probably about 30 yards away if that but uh, there was no real light source there, just a little bit of light coming from the next door neighbour's window and uh, that was just enough to, uh, to pick the fox out and I could see it uh, in colour as well. So I was actually very impressed with just how little light this actually needs to work. So as you can see, the scope also incorporates the 30mm scope tube body so you can use normal day scope mounts with this. Focus is on the front here and just in front of that you have the uh, secondary ring which allows you to switch between day and night mode. You'll also notice a built-in scope cap on the front there which is a nice little addition. So as you probably gathered the scope also has an inbuilt recording function uh, which stops and starts from a touch of the button on the eyepiece. It's recorded directly to an internal memory so there's no uh, SD cards or anything like that to, to mess about with. Um, another nice thing is it also records sound so a lot of night vision scopes for some reason or other tend not to have that feature on them but to have sound with your with your videos definitely enhances the uh, viewing experience it's also a very straightforward scope to use and you've got all the main controls here on the eyepiece so you've got the power button the magnification button and the record button you'll also notice the scope tower on the side here has a center push button and also a scroll feature which allows you to select options in the menu and scroll between them so the scope can be powered by two different power sources. The first is a internal rechargeable battery which is charged through the uh, USB port on the opposite side here. The other is via a removable um, internal battery. Now these batteries are a uh, 3.7 volt if I remember right. Uh, yeah, 3.7 volt battery which just drops into there. Get it around the right way, that way. And then you replace the cap. 
So runtime on this scope, realistically, if you're using a thermal spot as a spot and you're just using this in standby mode and then putting it on to take shots, then realistically you're probably looking on, uh, well, you're going to get all night from this scope. Um, it will last you a standard Fox and Rabbiton session and you've always got those internal batteries which you can drop in there um, as an extra backup. So as you can see by the footage, I'm actually using an aftermarket infrared illuminator. The C50 does come with its own illuminator supplied, but the one that I'm using is a, um, a slightly better unit. Um, it gets more range and it will also give a slightly clearer picture. So to get the most out of it, I would definitely recommend, same as with any night vision scope, I would always recommend an aftermarket illuminator. This I've just attached to a little piece of Picatinny rail there, which I've got on the scope and um, that just allows me using the Wicked Light uh, quick release mount to quickly and easily uh, add or take off the, um, the infrared and it's fully adjustable as well so it's a great little addition to this setup. So also like a lot of night vision units these days the Pulsar also incorporates the one shot zero function on there which is very handy and they've also built into this a uh, freeze frame um, feature which allows you to kind of freeze the image that you're seeing and then move the auxiliary cross onto your point of impact so it makes the whole zero in process a lot easier they've also incorporated into this the picture in picture mode which is something that I regularly use and um, I find that's very good just for precise aiming so in the field I've been very impressed with this uh, scope it's um, very much like the standard day scope in as much as it, you've got the front focus there and as I've said you've got all the basic function controls on the eyepiece there um, so it's quite a, an instinctive scope to use when you're out hunting uh, the other thing I like about it as well is it's a nice looking scope it looks a lot like a day scope so it doesn't look out of place on a traditional styled hunting rifle so I think that pretty much covers the basics of the scope and um, I've enjoyed using and testing this so uh, I think if you're in the uh, in the market for some new night vision I think that at uh, just over £1,200 retail price I think that's definitely a unit that's well worth considering.